Hey guys, Chaps here, and let's continue our discussion of controller settings. Yesterday I hit on the pros and cons of each scheme. Today I wanted to talk a bit more about remapping and then go through some of the various control options. Tomorrow we'll be all about setting the proper sensitivities, and on Thursday we'll wrap things up with discussion of the ideal controller configuration. A common theme yesterday was the whole, we would rather not take our hands off of the right stick in order to use movement commands. We certainly had some schemes that could help overcome this, but there's two other approaches that I wanted to cover. First up is the claw method. With claw, you basically hold your controller as normal. The change is that your right middle finger now controls RB and RT, and that index pointer finger now is in charge of the face buttons. It's a pretty cool technique, and it seems like it would solve quite a few issues. That said, it's uncomfortable, and has apparently led to some long-term issues due to the unnatural hand positioning. Perhaps the most elegant solution has been the adoption of paddles on controllers over the past five years or so. I personally use an official Xbox Elite controller, but there's other brands like Razer, Scuf, and other third-party ones as well. One of the most distinguishable features on these controllers are the programmable paddles, or buttons, on the back of the controller. I primarily just use A on the right side paddle, but I also have a left paddle map to B. 2 is all I find I really need, and any more just gets uncomfortable. In theory though, if you had all four paddles on and mapped to the face buttons, you would never need to take your hands off of those sticks again. It would be quite nice. While that's an elegant solution, not everyone wants to spend money, and I certainly wouldn't suggest using claw. So for that, we have button remapping. There's two main ways we can do this. First up, I'll hit on the Xbox Accessories app. With this, I can change what buttons the controller thinks I'm actually pressing. So here, if I want, I can make it so that by pressing Y, the controller actually thinks that I'm pressing X. Most of the time there's no point in having multiple commands both do the same thing, so there's no point in leaving X. So now I'm going to make it so that pressing X, it thinks I'm pressing Y. This is nice mainly for mapping paddles, but it can be a real source of confusion in game. Let's load up an example. Here's an ammo box that I want to pick up. I'll walk over to it and it says hold X to pick up. I hold X to pick it up and wait, that just brought up my perks menu. Oh yeah, I swapped X and Y around. I really need to hold Y so that the game thinks that I'm holding X. That's annoying, why is that? Well, when remapping at this level, we're basically remapping before the game reads the input. Your controller is sending X to the Xbox, and the Xbox is sending Y to the game. The game has no idea that you've remapped stuff. Because of this, something cool you can do is make it so that multiple buttons do the same command. I have Y mapped to X, but what if I left X still mapped there? If I were to load up the game, I could now press either X or Y and have it do the same thing. I said earlier that this was kind of pointless, and most of the time it usually is. But every now and then you'll find a game where this really comes in handy. Let's revert those changes though, and take a look at the better solution, shall we? In game, we have this nice setting for controller remapping. The way you read the screen is, if I press this, then it will act like I press that. So let's say I want to make Y my pick up, use, and meat shield button. I know that's on X, so I go down to X. And I say, okay, when I press Y here, I want it to act like I'm pressing X. Just to avoid confusion around the Y button, I'm also going to take that Y command and move it over to LB just so that it's out of the way. So now I back out and I go back into the game. Now with the same example as earlier, let's say I want to pick up some ammo. That used to be on the X button, but I said that I wanted Y to do the X command. As you can see, the game recognized that, and in-game, it actually updated the button prompts for us. On that same note, you'll also note that at the bottom here, it says that LB is now my ultimate, because I remapped the Y command to be when pressing LB. As I press it, something odd happens here though. It used my ultimate, but it also used TACOM. Well, that's because we have the LB button mapped both to the Y and LB commands. You've got to be careful when remapping this stuff. This in-game remapping is nice, but there's two potential errors you have to watch out for. First off, you could have an unmapped button, like right now my X button doesn't actually do anything. And second is the example I just showed, where you actually have multiple commands mapped to the same button. This can be a blessing and a curse, just as I discussed yesterday in the video where we talked about defaultinate. Something else cool that I'll note about remapping in-game is that it only updates during gameplay. If you change A and B around to strange buttons, you don't need to worry about that messing up your menu navigation. You can see here that it clearly states it only makes these changes when you're in a match, and I gotta say, that's a pretty nice advantage of this in-game remapping. I've got two more notes I want to hit on for remapping. First off is priority. Yesterday I gave the example of defaultinate. Cover is on A by default, and run and roll is on X. If I map the X command to the A button, A now has all three commands. 
Well, when playing, if you press A, it starts with the default command and then works its way down the priority list. So if you're holding A to run, it's still going to slide to cover if possible, because cover is a higher priority. It's not really that big of a deal, but it's certainly something to consider when remapping. And lastly, we have the keyboard and mouse remapping, or keybinding as it's called in game. What you'll notice here is that each command is listed, along with the button that activates it. This is command-based remapping, rather than button-based remapping that we have on controllers. This grants a significantly higher level of freedom to keyboard and mouse players, and is really disappointing that we don't get to see it on controller. I know I hit on the RB issues a lot yesterday, and that's a pretty good example here. A lot of people hate having reload and chainsaw on the same button. Well, look at this, they're separate commands on the keyboard. Here you can easily leave reload on R, but move chainsaw over to G or whatever you want to have it on. Obviously the keyboard has a lot more buttons at its disposal, and the button priority isn't as big of an issue. But man, I really wish we had it separated out on controller as well. Oh, and just as a side note, it's really odd that some commands still aren't split out. Like, why is weapon pickup and revive still locked together on one command, I wonder? Let's move on though, and talk about some of these settings. We talked about control schemes already, so let's skip over that. These six settings with the sliders all affect your aim and sensitivity. I originally tried to include all of that in this video, but it made it insanely long, so check back tomorrow for a separate video covering all of those. We arrive now at the vibration settings. For this, we simply have an option of turning it on or off. I used to keep it turned off, as I found the vibration a bit distracting. Once I got my Elite controller though, I learned that I could tune the vibration. I gotta say, I really enjoy having different aspects of the controller have different vibration intensities. Overall, I keep it pretty low so that it's not annoying, but it's certainly nice to get that feedback. I would have loved to see the Gears menu update instead of having on or off to have different levels of intensity for vibration. The next two settings are your simple Y and X inversion. These only affect the right stick, or I guess they affect your aiming stick, as some people have it swapped. There's not too much else to say about this setting, as it's pretty standard across most games. Making our way down, we have Toggle Aim. I feel like this is mainly here as an accessibility item. It basically makes it so that you can tap aim and stay aimed on sight rather than needing to hold the control. In a game as movement intensive as Gears, I don't see why anyone would toggle this on for the most part. I said that accessibility is the main reason I could see having it on, but as I think about it I'm starting to kinda question how some of the Horde players might enjoy it. Particularly in Gears 4 where people use turrets a lot, it may have been nice to have this on where you could just press the left trigger and stay aimed on sight on your turret. Overall though, I would highly suggest avoiding this one. Toggle primary weapon is interesting. We all know that Gears lets you hold two primary weapons, each being on the left or right d-pad spot. Using the default loadout, you have your Lancer on the right and your Nasher on the left. If you have your Lancer out and you press left, you take out your Nasher. But what happens if you press left again? Well, nothing happens. With the setting turned on, however, it would actually cycle back to the Lancer. Basically, if you have a primary weapon out and you try to select it again, it will swap to your other primary weapon. Some people enjoy this because they don't need to pay attention to which side each weapon is on. Others simply find it easier to just hit left over and over again rather than to reach over to that right d-pad spot. I personally like to have more control over it, so I have this disabled. Probably the coolest implementation of this though is people creating more of a classic game control scheme. Sticking with default, imagine swapping Y and D-pad right, and then turning the setting on. Y is largely unused, and now moved off to the D-pad. You still have that natural left D-pad switch to the Nasher, but now we also have the Y button. Pressing Y will now swap back and forth between your two primary weapons. It's kinda like what we see in most other shooters. I don't know anyone who actually does this, but it's an interesting concept that I figured I'd throw out there. Do you know anyone who does this, or would you even consider making the change yourself? Let's move on and hit on omnidirectional roll. Classically, Gears lets you roll forwards, backwards, left, and right. I think it was Gears 3 that introduced the omni roll, which lets you roll in any direction, including the diagonals. I personally like having this on, but I know a decent number of people that turn it off. I think some make the argument that wall bouncing is easier with this turned off, but being I'm not really a hyper bouncer or anything, I can't really comment too much on this. The next setting is kind of odd, and it's called analog movement in cover. The description down here reads, when in cover, roll the movement stick left or right to control movement speed. I don't know about you, but when I read that it didn't make any sense. I did some testing and this is what I found it actually does. Basically when this is on, if you're in cover you can move side to side and your speed is based on how far you're moving your stick to the left or right. In other words, if my stick was like this, I'd move slowly to the right. 
If it was like this, I'd also move slowly to the right, because while it's all the way at the top, it's still only very slightly to the right side. The further you move your stick to the side, the faster you move. With this off, the direction of movement is still based on the direction of the stick, but now your speed is based off the magnitude of the stick in any direction. So again, with the stick like this, we'll move slowly to the right. Moving it out further to the right will speed it up as usual, so yup, it still stays the same. But now, what if we move it up here? Well, we're slightly off to the right, so we're still going to move to the right. But the speed is based off the total stick magnitude. Because the stick is pressed all the way out, we're moving at full speed. This isn't exactly intuitive to me, and I can't say I'm a fan of it, but maybe that's just because I'm used to the way it is after all of these years. Does anyone actually play with this off? What benefit do you think it gains you? Moving further down the list, we get to some that seem more accessibility and inclusion oriented. First, we have these options for sticks and triggers. For those, let's press Y and hop back to the control scheme page. Right now, I have it all set to default, but let's go down and mess with sticks. The first non-default option is simply left-handed. All this has done is swap the left and the right stick. Something I'm kind of curious about here is roadie run. Like, with default when you roadie run, it moves your yaw command from the right stick to the left stick. It did this because it was awkward to hold A while also controlling the right stick. Well, with this change over to left-handed, that's exactly what you still need to do. It would be nice if when roadie running they kept that yaw command on the left stick if you had the left-handed controls enabled here. The next configuration we have is called Legacy. As you can see, all it's done is swap strafe and rotate. And yeah, sorry, I've, I've been saying yaw, but I guess we're controlling people so it's actually just rotate. This is actually kind of similar to single stick movement, which is something we'll discuss shortly. This just feels really odd to me and I can't imagine wanting to play like this. The left-handed stick doesn't feel that bad, it's not great but it's not terrible, but the right-handed stick is, I just can't get used to that. Lastly, we get to legacy left-handed, and again all this is doing is taking legacy and swapping the left and right sticks. As a right-handed player, it's hard for me to really judge this setting. That said, I found legacy to be strange, so I imagine a left-handed person would find legacy to be strange as well. Do you know anyone who uses this? Oh, and actually something kind of funny that I want to bring up is that whole roadie run thing again. Remember how left-handed is odd because we need to hold down A and move the right stick in order to control movement? Well, with legacy left-handed, being it swaps the sticks back again, we're actually all set. It puts that rotate command back on the left stick when roadie running. Man, it's kind of odd. The last setting on the screen is triggers. This is a simple one with the option for default or left-handed. The setting does exactly what it sounds like. If you have it switched to left-handed, it will swap LT and RT and swap LB with RB. It's pretty simple. If we back out of the screen and head back to the rest of the settings, we've got three left. The first one is button tap challenges. This is for things like when your DBNO, if a sire takes you, or really any time that you have to do the quick time event that make you press a button rapidly. By default, this is set to quick taps. The other option is press and hold, which is what I've actually been using since launch. It's actually an accessibility thing, but it's pretty on par with doing a reasonably fast tap. If you're a super fast tapper and play a lot of PvE, then perhaps using quick taps will help you survive a sire for a bit longer or something like that. For most of us though, it does not matter. In PvP, if you're tapping A to get up, you'll see no difference between tapping as fast as you can or by simply holding it. I know I for one will take the easier route. It's also interesting to note that even with the press and hold thing on, I still often find myself tapping. And funny enough, it doesn't actually change anything. I've basically got no reason to not leave it on press and hold. I can press and hold and get up just as fast as anyone else, or I can spam the button and get up just as fast as anyone else. We arrive now at the swap stick while aimed option, and just as it sounds, if enabled the left and right sticks will swap functions while you're aiming. I again can see this being useful for accessibility, like if someone has issues controlling the right stick, this allows them to move with the left stick, then press aim, and now aim with the left stick. Outside of that though, I don't see any reason for using this. The sticks act a certain way, I don't want that changing on me when I press the left trigger. I really do feel that this is just an accessibility thing though, because look here, it says it's best when combined with single stick movement, so let's take a look at that. When this is enabled, the left stick still controls movement forward and backwards, but now instead of controlling strafing left and right, it actually controls your yaw, or rotation I should say. This is just the same as a legacy control scheme, but with two main differences. First, I don't know why this is the case, but it feels much smoother. Like, I thought it was the same thing, and it basically is when you look at the control scheme, but I feel it's much better this way. The other change is that it doesn't actually change anything on your right stick. So what does this accomplish? 
Well, we get to keep all of our aiming on the right stick, which is nice. We also get some nice smooth navigation on the left stick. The only downside is that we can't strafe anymore. I mean, if you practice enough with moving one hand to the left and the other hand to the right, then you can sorta of strafe? Kinda? Maybe? But in reality, you can't strafe. What this really opened things up for, though, is the ability to navigate the map with one stick. Previously, if you wanted to navigate with one stick, you had to do strange combinations of walk forward, then strafe, then walk backward, strafe again, and so on. Now, because you can actually control your rotation, you can keep walking forwards the whole time, and it basically looks like natural movement. The best way to describe the feel of this movement is that it's like you're roadie running without actually roadie running. The left stick movement is exactly the same. I've heard people say that they've switched a single stick because it's helped them with wall bouncing, but again, as someone who's not an expert bouncer, I find this hard to comment on. What I can say though is that not being able to strafe is a big turnoff for me. Think about corner sniping someone, or basically any movement that requires strafing. Yeah, basically all of that is impossible with this scheme. I will say this though, it certainly is cool, and a lot of people seem to really be enjoying it. I personally can't bring myself to use it, but if you haven't tried it, I suggest giving it a go. And with that, well, we've covered all of the advanced settings. Well, except for sensitivity and aim speed type of things. That is actually a really interesting topic though, so I truly suggest that you check out tomorrow's video. You'll probably learn a thing or two. If you found this video helpful, be sure to head down below and hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.